Hello everybody and welcome back to Soul Stained Ink. Today I have a book review for you so stick around to see what I read. So today what I have for you is kind of a twisted retelling of a classic thriller suspense story. It is the middle grade dead time story, The Beast of Baskerville by Annette and Gina Cascone. And this was published in 2012. This is a very, very quick read. There are, I believe, 175 pages to it. The type is pretty large. The chapters are pretty short. And the story is actually fairly funny. It reminds me a lot of the old Nickelodeon show, Are You Afraid of the Dark, where they tell the ghost stories around a campfire and you can just, everybody kind of gets transported into it. You can feel and see the story. Um, it was very fun. It was very quick. And I'm giving it an overall rating of about three stars. Um, let's go ahead and talk about the story a little bit before I tell you about my favorite and least favorite parts. So the storyline is that there are these kids living in the town of Baskerville and a family has moved back in to the house atop of Dead Man's Hill, which is where the legendary beast of Baskerville lives. And the story behind the beast is that years ago, like several hundred years ago, a witch married a mortal and her coven was so angry at her for breaking the rules and marrying a mortal man and telling him about her witchcraft that they placed a curse on her and made her husband a three-headed one-eyed newt and her son who she was pregnant with at the time turned out to be a beast child and so every year the beast would eat unsuspecting children from Baskerville and this has gone on for years hundreds of years. This is the local legend. And then the family moves back into the house and it's a really creepy kid who doesn't go to school with them because he's a genius and his even creepier mother. So it's the middle of summer and our main character Adam and his best friend Eugene and all of their friends are having what they call tent night where everybody in the neighborhood is sleeping out in their backyard in tents. And at 1030, they all sneak out of their backyard and they're going to go play like kick the can and just have a good old time. Well, Jimmy, who is the creepy genius son, has decided that he's going to throw a birthday party. It's his birthday and nobody's going. So he shows up at kick the can and just starts threatening people and causing a big scene. So after that, people start disappearing, there's screaming, there's running around, and we don't really know if this is actually like a creepy story or if it's just a couple of the characters who really like to pull pranks on their friends. And as the story goes on, there are a lot of bits that lead you to really strongly believe it is Dougie and Travis trying to pull pranks on their friends, especially Eugene, who is kind of gullible and scared about the beast to begin with. And then, you know, things unfold from there. And I'm not going to tell you exactly what happens, but it is slightly creepy and there is a twist at the end that's pretty fun. So the reason I'm giving this book three stars instead of four is that there are a lot of parts that just kind of info dump on you and push at you. Um, and I know that that's pretty typical for the thriller, horror, children's and middle grade books, but I don't really like it because I feel like you can be very subtle and they'll pick up on it as long as they're, you know, third grade and up. They really pick up on those subtleties. Um, I mean, they still enjoy when you kind of push the information at them, but you can be a little more subtle about it. And it just really wasn't subtle. Uh, there are a lot of times when the the information is not only shoved at you, but it is repeated constantly. So you just are really sure that that's right. And then the twist shows up and you either knew that it was going to be a twist 
because they shoved the information at you so much or you knew there was going to be a twist and then there really wasn't a twist and you were like, wait, what's happening? Because they shoved that information at you so much. And I don't really like that style of writing. However, the story was funny. The main characters are really sassy and snarky to each other, which I enjoyed. And I love this twist on a classic uh, horror legend. Um, so if you like middle grade books like Goosebumps, Dead Time Stories is something else that's really fun to get into. They take the old um, horror uh, legends and fairy tales and old novels and turn them into little middle grade books. So you should definitely check out the Cascone Sisters, check out the Dead Time Stories, and if you have read any of their books, please let me know what you thought of them down below. I will talk to you guys again soon. Hope you have a wonderful day. Bye.